Good morning. It's March 23rd, 2020, a Monday morning here in Catalina. It's absolutely beautiful. The sun is shining. And I want to share with you a couple of thoughts this morning as we begin a, a new devotional series. And this devotional series will last longer than the last one. And that one, that's because we're going to be studying the life of Joseph. In Genesis chapter 37 this morning, we're going to begin with a few verses in just a moment. Uh, but as you think about the life of Joseph, one of the things that stands out in his life is at the end when, it, when his brothers are standing before him and his brothers are basically saying, Joseph, we were rascals to you and please don't be a rascal to us. That's my paraphrase. Joseph was able to respond. He says, while you meant it for evil, everything that happened, while you meant it for evil, God meant it for good. And, and, and certainly Joseph's life is a wonderful testimony to the fact of, of the promise and God's word in the New Testament, Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And certainly the, the Old Testament life of Joseph is an example of that. And even though we have that promise that God works all things together for good, there's many times where we can't necessarily see the events that are happening in our life at this very moment, how God is going to take them and how God is going to work them together for good. And certainly this is never more true than the life of Joseph as we study that. It's amazing, but God kept his overall plan from Joseph. Now he did give his covenant promises to his grandfather Abraham and to to his um, to his great grandfather Abraham and to his grandfather Isaac and to his father Jacob or Israel, uh, and, and he did give him that dream which he held on to and he had trust and faith and confidence in. But really, God kept uh, his overall plan and what was going to happen in Joseph's life from him because there were several tests that God needed to bring Joseph along uh, to help prepare him for that day. And God's ultimate purpose for us in working all things together for good is to conform us to the image of Jesus Christ. And remember that today, that, that what God is allowing to, to happen in your life, the paths that he's leading you down today are, are, are for a purpose. And that is for us to become more like the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, this morning, we're going to be in Genesis 37 and reading verses 5 through 11 and looking at God's mysterious ways. Genesis 37, beginning in verse 5, the Bible says, And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brothers indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And then verse 11 says, And his brothers envied him, but his father observed the same. Uh, in this passage we just read, the Bible refolds, or records a twofold response to Joseph's dreams. Uh, first of all, his brothers envied him, but his father observed the same. And as we think about this, his brothers certainly were jealous of him, but his father began to think about it. After he rebuked him, saying, Shall I and your mother and your brothers bow down to you? But then he, he pondered the saying, wondering how could this all be a part of God's covenant promise to Abraham and to Isaac and to him? God's mysterious ways. We see that Joseph did share the two dreams with his brothers and with his father and his mother. Uh, we see the brothers' response. Now, we don't exactly know uh, the attitude of which Joseph recorded what uh, shared these dreams with them. And we're not necessarily certain whether or not um, this was all part of, whether this was the, the right thing for Joseph to do, but God did permit for him to share it. And even as his brothers envied him and in the response of his brothers to his dreams, it was all part of God's 
uh, wonderful, mysterious ways to, to his plan to work all things together for good. Um, it was all part of his plan. And, and so we see uh, throughout Joseph's life and the years to follow, uh, really it was about the next 13 years of his life before he finally got promoted to second in command of all of Egypt. During that time, Joseph faced test after test after test not understanding, not knowing why God was allowing all of these things to happen. And yet Joseph did not respond in despair to the circumstances, to all the trials that, that were unfolding before him. He hung on to the covenant promise of Abraham and Isaac and his father Jacob. He hung on to those prophetic dreams that God had given him. And he put his faith and trust in his God and not in his circumstance. God's ways certainly were mysterious in Joseph's life. They were beyond his human comprehension. And as God was sovereignly at work, and he was going to save the whole nation of Israel by everything that happened to Joseph, man was certainly unable to understand his way. But praise the Lord that Joseph trusted in God. Question, do I put... Do I trust God's plan for my life? He does have a plan. And he will work all things together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And that plan is to conform me to the image of his dear son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Am I trusting in God's plan today? Or am, am I so focused on the circumstance, on the events of life that are unfolding? Romans 20, excuse me, Proverbs 20 and verse 24 says, man's Man's goings are of the Lord, and how can a man then understand his own way? You know, the, the, the path that we find ourselves down today, uh, we, we may not fully understand it, but God does. And God's sovereign and God's in control. We're reminded in Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, where God says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heaven is higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Can I encourage you this morning, as God's mysterious ways are unfolding in your life and my life, as his plan to conform us to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that promise that we have that, that what he's doing to conform us to the image of Jesus Christ, that all things are going to work together for good, will you simply choose to trust him? Will you choose to praise him? Can I encourage you today to find a promise from God's word and then to share that promise with three people? Others need to be encouraged. Others need to be reminded of God's promises and to put their faith and trust in him. And so at the end of Joseph's life, he said, God meant it for good. God planned it for good. Now at the beginning of his life, he didn't fully understand what he did at the end of his life, but he had faith and trust trust in God. And so it is today. May God help us to have trust and faith in him that God will work all things together for good, that God will use all these things to conform us to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. I hope you have a blessed day. And remember to share a special promise from God's word with at least three people. Lord bless you. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow.